Good evening and welcome to Quorum. I'm Ron Brown. We begin tonight with a word of a breakthrough in budget reconciliation talks. Both the House and the Senate have passed an $82 million measure that will partially restore 2010 budget cuts to state agencies and programs. Governor Haley Barber has ordered more than $458 million cut because of dramatic shortfalls in state revenue. But now the governor says he will sign Senate Bill 2495 after weeks of debate among Senate and House negotiators. It will draw from the state's financial reserves to restore some money for education, public safety, and corrections. Keep in mind, though, that Senate leaders got a dismal revenue report from February with shortfalls above the 12 percent mark. So Governor Barber may announce more budget cuts yet. But this budget compromise means at least a little relief for some hard-pressed state agencies. We will hear lawmakers' reaction to this development a little later in the show. And throughout the show, we will be discussing transportation. It's a critically important issue in a state as sparsely settled as Mississippi. Our highways, railways, and bridges do so much more than just get us from point A to point B. They support our economy and they also help delineate and define our society and our culture. But much of our existing transportation system is worn at the edges. Consider these findings from the American Society of Civil Engineers. The group's 2009 report card on infrastructure found that 25% of Mississippi's bridges are structurally deficient or functionally obsolete. 40% of Mississippi's major roads are in poor or mediocre condition. And meantime, vehicle travel on Mississippi's highways, well, it increased by 78% from 1990 to 2007. Transportation infrastructure is a nationwide concern. Much of the road work that we see across the state of Mississippi today is funded in great part by federal dollars. We shot video recently in the Metro Jackson area where Interstates 20 and 55 merge with State Highway 49. There, federal stimulus cash is paying for road retopping efforts, new traffic signals, and other transportation projects. Similar projects are underway all across the state, providing much needed work for many Mississippians, but the question is, is there enough money to pay for it? The transportation research group TRIP released a report last month called Future Mobility in Mississippi. Quoting from the report, from 2010 to 2019, the Mississippi Department of Transportation estimates that $12.5 billion will be needed to significantly improve road and bridge conditions, relieve traffic congestions, enhance economic development opportunities, and make roadway safety improvements. However, during that time, MDOT estimates that only $6.5 billion will be available for road and bridge improvements, congestion relief, economic development enhancements, and traffic safety improvements. In short, Mississippi has big transportation needs, and state leaders will struggle to find ways to meet those needs. Governor Barber himself keeps close tabs on the state's transportation priorities. He spoke at length on the topic Tuesday during a press conference at the University of Mississippi. If, if we're going to build highways that generate jobs, economic growth, and prosperity, whether it's on Mississippi Highway 15, or whether it's on Mississippi Highway 9, whether it's from uh, Meridian to the Indian Reservation, uh, there are lots of places where we are going to do and are or should be doing road construction that's tied to job growth and the public safety increment that goes with that. When you get a whole lot of traffic going into the Indian Reservation, then you've got a bigger safety angle. We've got three big projects on the coast that the federal government is helping us pay for. To take 611 from the refinery at Pascagoula up to 10, to take 607 from Stennis out of the north side of Stennis up to uh, Picayune, and then to take 603, I guess it is, from Bay St. Louis to Kiln, take all of those and four-lane them because they have got significant, not only economic development angles, they got significant evacuation angles. At, at 611, for instance, you know, sometimes you got 1,800 people working at the bottom of that two-lane road that if there's a fire or an explosion uh, at the refinery, you, know, you gotta you gotta be able to get them out. So I do think that there is a public safety angle here, but normally it's driven by economic development because economic development is what puts the people there. 
We will hear more from the governor and two key lawmakers on transportation in the hour ahead, but also tonight we have Mark McConnell on our panel. He is the Assistant Chief Engineer for Field Operations at the Mississippi Department of Transportation. And we're also joined by Dr. Bethany Stitch. She's an Assistant Professor of Public Administration at Mississippi State University, and she's an expert on transportation planning. Of course, we want you to join in on the conversation as well. Our toll-free phone line is open right now. Dial 1-877-405-5247 with your questions for our guests. That number again, 1-877-405-5247. You can also email your questions to quorum at mpbonline.org, and you can join the discussion on Twitter. Just add the hashtag quorum to your comment and follow us at twitter.com slash mpbonline. Well, first, uh, Mark McConnell, we heard the governor's view on priorities, uh, but what about MDOT? What does the uh, priority list look like at your department for right now? Well, as you said, the, the needs are great. We have... Uh, we don't have the funding that we need to get all the, the needs done. Highway 15 from I-20 to the Tennessee state line is a, is a big priority. Mm -hmm. uh, to get four lanes all the way through Tennessee is something that we're really looking at. Uh, you, the comment on bridges, uh, I wanted to bring that up too. We have, we roughly get about $65 million a year for what we call BR money. Uh, of that, we give 15 million to counties, and then we use 50 million, which about 10 million of that is for uh, preliminary engineering and for buying right away. So that's about 40 million we can spend on replacing bridges. We have, if you talk about structurally deficient and obsolete bridges, we need almost three billion dollars to replace all of those type bridges. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean they're not safe; they are safe. But, but they're, what, they're flagged as being... Uh, they could be marked as being uh, reduced weight limit, mm -hmm. or they could, if they're closed, or if, if we have some issues with them, we'll post them. Uh, those are the type of bridges that we need to be replacing, and we just don't have the money to do it. Mm -hmm. You have enough money for people to go out and inspect them, though, I take it? Yes, we do. Okay, and that's being done. We, we don't want to scare done. anybody. We just want to let people that's know. That's exactly right. I don't want to say that. We're not, they're not unsafe. Mm -hmm. If the bridge is open and it's posted, it's safe to go across. Okay. Well, the uh, ASCE report card on infrastructure uh, had uh, several roads and bridges across the state. Do you agree with uh, those assessments? Uh? I, I do agree with the assessments. The interesting thing is um, that's one piece of the puzzle. The ASCE report notes that we have a $6 billion shortfall, but the $6 billion shortfall really is just when you're looking at bridges and highway infrastructure. We also have significant transportation needs along the 10 Tom Waterway, along our short line railroads, and our class one railroads. So that, that's a smaller figure. It's just one mode, uh, not looking at all the modes. Okay, and uh, Mark, what's uh, MDOT doing to address the issue right now, or what, what are they doing uh, planning for the issue in the future? For the lack of funding? Uh, for, this, uh, for this need and the lack of funding. Well, I mean, we're trying to be innovative in the way that we're approaching. For instance, pavements are, we have, you mentioned the number of pavements that need to be updated or up, uh, overlaid. Mm -hmm. we're, we're having to use different types of treatments. We're doing preventive maintenance where maybe the road's not quite as bad. We're doing chip seals, slurry seals, sealing cracks. That extends the pavement life so that we can address the worst pavements. Uh, we still don't have enough money. If we if we were going to address the ones just to get them in a satisfactory condition just on pavements, we would need about a billion dollars just mm -hmm. for pavements. So I don't really have the answer other than we're trying to do preventive maintenance type things to make all of our bridges and our pavements last a little bit longer. Okay, now we've heard how vehicle traffic has increased 78% over an 18-year period now. Are Mississippi's roads and bridges prepared for yet more increases in traffic, Dr. Stitch? What do you think? Well, there will be increases in vehicle traffic, but what really beats up your roads are trucks. And so we're looking at a huge increase in freight volume that's moved by truck along our roadways, which increases the maintenance costs, which is why you see this degradation of road condition these heavy trucks. So when you go to Walmart, it has to get there, right? And it gets there by truck. And so if we can find a way to support our roadway infrastructure by investing not only in it, but in our other modes, then we can start saving our roadway infrastructure so there's not so much damage. Okay, Mark, are we prepared? 
Well, we're we're having to actually increase our design standards to in, to handle the increased loads on our bridges and our roadways. So it's actually increasing our cost of building roadways. We're trying to handle the capacity as we can uh, with uh, one of the things that really has helped is a stimulus project, the stimulus money from the federal government this last year. Uh, they're talking about another jobs bill that's going to have a piece for new transportation money. So mm -hmm. we're doing all we can to keep up. Okay. Now, which regions in the state are particularly prone to some of these traffic congestions that we're talking about? And do you know what's being done to ease it uh, right now? Well, I would say the coast uh, and the Gulfport, Biloxi area is, is one region, and DeSoto County in the Jackson metro area. Some of the things we are trying to use to address congestion is traffic signal timing. If we can do studies on traffic signal timing, that helps delay and, and keeps people from having to idle next to traffic signals. We're also using ITS components. You know, you've probably seen the big signs in the Jackson metro area. Uh, if there's an accident on the roadway, we can put a message on that board and mm -hmm. tell people to use an alternative route. We're, we're looking at any kind of thing we can to help congestion, to help uh, people get through on the highways a little bit quicker. Okay, uh, Dr. Stitch, what can you tell us about uh, uh, the process? Are any critical projects and planning on hold in Mississippi because of any federal delays that you know of? Well, the environmental process is a very lengthy process that everyone has to go through and it's very expensive. And I believe that there are some efforts working on trying to improve the timeliness. There's a federal initiative called Everyday Counts, Everyday Counts. And so um, from that standpoint, I, I think there are some ways we can find efficiencies. But as a general rule, um, we, Mississippi has so many assets. It's such a beautiful state with so many assets with uh, the Ten Tom Waterway and the Mississippi River, the coastal ports, we have good roadways. They could be better. Um, for instance, we could have more interstates that would help attract commerce and economic development. So there's some planning for the future that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, whether you're Mississippi or, or nationwide, there's, there's a huge shortfall in funding for infrastructure. And so the stimulus package has helped, but it's much more of a band-aid to the overall pro problem, which is all of our modes probably most importantly, uh, our highways are, are just underfunded. Okay, well, when Governor Barber took questions from journalists yesterday at Ole Miss, he talked in part about how federal policy impacts decision-making in Mississippi. Here's what he had to say about the delay in Washington's own transportation agenda. Uh, first of all, in terms of highway construction generally, we, do, we have the problem that the Federal Surface Transportation Act has expired. If we build a highway typically in Mississippi, the federal government's going to pay us 80% of the cost, sometimes even 90% of the cost. And so we're at a great disadvantage in thinking through our program when there is no federal bill, no federal law to tie our program to. So uh, I have said, let's don't, let's don't have a general highway transportation bill until there's a federal bill, which apparently is not going to happen until next year. Okay, well, Mark, MDOT has awarded just over $350 million for some shovel-ready projects this spring through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, uh, the federal stimulus. Mm -hmm. Would you describe how that process is unfolding right now? And I guess the question is, have those shovel-ready projects gotten a quick start or not? They have, in fact. Of, the, of that $355 million, we, we have all of our projects obligated, which is when I'm saying our projects, MDOT-related projects on the state highway system. All of those are already obligated and, and, and let to contract or to be let to contract. We also had uh, projects for small urban and large urban areas, and all of our money has been obligated. So we're 100 percent. All of that money has been obligated okay, well, as of I, right now. Do you know how many jobs have been created so far or a ballpark figure, or, or, and are, this, are there enough? Are they sufficient for the task? It's, it's difficult to say how many were created, but I do know Butch Brown is our executive director and he's the president of ASHTO this year. And what ASHTO is reporting is that we've created or created or retained 280,000 employees through the uh, era funds. I don't know how many of that relates in Mississippi, but it's quite a few. Quite a few, okay. Dr. Stitch, uh, we've heard how vehicle traffic has increased over 78% over an 18-year period. 
Do you think Mississippi's roads and bridges are prepared for even more increases in traffic? No, I do think they're prepared for increases in traffic, but, but interestingly enough, the reason is not Mississippi or MDOT specific. If, if you think about some of the other movements in the nation to make cars more fuel efficient or to provide hybrid vehicles, well, the bulk of the funding to repair your roads and bridges comes from the fuel tax. So if you're buying less gas but traveling more mileage, there's less money in the revenue stream to support your vehicle traffic. So it's not just a question of the vehicle traffic itself increasing, but it's also the revenue decreasing. And since we haven't had uh, a real look at it, and when Governor Barber's talking about the holdup in federal transportation legislation, a lot of it comes down to, well, how are we going to fund this? There are big questions that need to be answered. It's not just a reauthorization of the continual bill, because what we've had since ICE-T in 1991 has been a lack of funding because this funding structure is reliant on uh, fuel taxes. And so as we push greener vehicles and alternative technology and energy, uh, we're, we're providing more traffic on our roads and bridges with less money to repair them and keep them mm -hmm. maintained. That's an interesting point, Mark. Are federal environmental issues affecting MDOT's infrastructure work? They are, in fact. Uh, there's some new rules that are coming into effect in 2011 where we can only disturb up to 20 acres without monitoring the water quality leaving the project. That doesn't sound like it's a big deal, but when you're talking about a linear project, which could be for 10 miles, that is really going to restrict the amount of acreage that can be disturbed to build that roadway. Mm -hmm. And then in 2014, it goes down to 10 acres. So obviously that's going to increase the cost of building highways. We are trying to be proactive and we're actually letting projects now with the new rule in effect because we know it's common and we need to, we need to address it. Okay, are there any other federal factors that influence MDOT's planning and its work in the field, Mark? Um, well, there's obviously environmental concerns for developing projects you know, and environmental documents and that type thing, so yes. Okay. Well, Dr. Stitch, what issues should state leaders factor in when considering our long-term transportation needs? What do you think should go into their planning? Well, as a general rule, I think you have to look at all modes, understanding that highways are the most uh, expensive, but also the most productive, uh, given that our freight-based economic development relies a great deal on trucking. But there's great plans right now out there for the Port of Gulfport. As the Port of Mobile has containerized, we should look towards 45 and improvements in 45, both through Alabama and Mississippi, ideally uh, lobbying for interstate standards there, perhaps the same on 82, so that as you have this confluence of containerized traffic that, that can come on barge or ship or truck, uh, we're prepared to be able to capitalize on economic development opportunities in that way. Or rail, what about uh, Mississippi's rail network, uh, Mark? Are improvements and upgrades needed there? Uh, they are, and we, we actually, of that uh, stimulus money, we spent some of that on, on rails. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but uh, we are constantly looking at uh, improving our rail system. Okay, and Dr. Stitch, uh, how do you think uh, Mississippi might benefit from a federal push on public transportation? Is that feasible here? <laughs> uh, yes, I think there are some benefits, and they're, they're usually not benefits that people think of. For instance, um, if you're on Medicaid or Medicare and you need transportation to the doctor, they'll have to provide that for you, so you'll call a cab, and cabs are expensive. If we can find small transportation systems that can function within our urban areas, um, we can save money for Medicaid and Medicare, which are really suffering right now budgetarily. So there's one. There's also, um, obviously, the high-speed rail passenger network uh, can work in tandem with our freight network, and as we improve one, we can improve the other. Which comes first, it doesn't matter. So long as the infrastructure itself has improved, uh, Mississippi will benefit. Okay, and Mark, uh, what do you think about uh, public transportation as a beat way to uh, is, relieve some of the... It uh, is part of our planning. When, when we look at a project, we're considering rail and bus and transit and everything like that. So it is a part of it. Okay. Well, I want to thank uh, Mark McConnell and Bethany Stitch for joining us in this first part of the show. We're going to take a short break now, and then we're going to speak with the chairman of the House and Senate Transportation Committees. We hope that you will join us by calling quorum with your questions. The toll-free phone number is 1-877-405-5247. We will have more in just a moment. You're listening to MPB Think Radio. I'm Karen Brown, your host of Mississippi Edition. 
Each weekday morning, we bring you the issues, personalities, and places of Mississippi through conversations with lawmakers, musicians, authors, and residents. We connect you with the news that shapes your life. If it affects Mississippians, then you'll hear it here. Tune to Mississippi Edition each weekday morning at 8.30, right here on MPB Think Radio. It's a hit parade of great performances, made Grammy great by producer-songwriter David Foster. Join David, Celine Dion, Josh Groban, Andrea Bocelli, Michael Bublé, and more when they wow us anew in a great big Vegas review. Hitman, David Foster and Friends. Wow. On great performances. Sunday at 8.30 on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. sold more than 50 million records and sung and composed with everyone from Luciano Pavarotti and B.B. King to Lady Gaga and Kanye West. Now, Michael Bolton takes us on a spectacular grand tour of the music he loves on stage at London's Royal Albert Hall. The voice is unmistakable, the passion undeniable, and the evening unforgettable. Tuesday at 7 on MPB. Welcome back to Quorum on MPB Television and mpbonline.org. And we also want to thank our listeners on MPB Think Radio. Bond financing remains a point of debate at the state capitol. There are measures that would allow the state to borrow millions of dollars to fund highway and bridge repairs and other road work. Governor Barber set out some conditions yesterday for his approval of any bond legislation that makes it to his desk. I am not averse to making bond commitments that are transparent. I'm not going to be for a $300 million bill that says, here, give the highway commissioners $300 million and let them do whatever, let them do whatever they want to. Uh, I think that's a disservice to the taxpayers. I think we ought to have transparency. What are we going to get? What are we going to pay for? Now, they're the, the high Department of Transportation. And I should say to you all, uh, Mississippi has the only independently elected transportation commission in the United States. They are independent of me, and they're quite proud of it. So uh, and that's, that's part of it. That's when I got elected governor, I knew what I was getting into. But I do think that the public should know if we're going to put $300 million of debt on the public for the next 30 years, for what? I think we have done a very poor job uh, historically in Mississippi of tying surface transportation to economic development. As the chief economic development officer of the state, I can tell you, after the quality of the workforce, Logistics is the second biggest issue when you're trying to recruit an industry to come to, to come to Mississippi. The bond commission that includes the governor and the attorney general. The House voted last week to approve a bill that would raise up to $300 million in bond financing for transportation projects. The Senate approved its own bond bill last week. Today we learned that those measures will be combined and their differences worked out in conference between House and Senate negotiators. Tonight we will hear from the men who wrote and introduced those measures. We are joined now by Senator Tom King. He is the Republican chairman of the Senate Highways and Transportation Committee and Democratic Representative Warner McBride who chairs the House Transportation Committee. Now we have a lot of ground to cover so feel free to phone in your questions right now. The number once again, one 877 that means it's toll free, 405-5247. You can also email your questions to quorum at mpbonline.org. Gentlemen, before we dive into transportation, I want to get your views on the budget reconciliation deal that passed your chambers yesterday. Do you want to start? I I think think? A, thank you. I think it's a great bill, $82 million. Almost half of it's for education. MAP will be receiving $34 million. Uh, National Board uh, Certification is $2 million. The Chickasaw District is one million, so sixteen million of its uh, corrections. So I think I think it's I think it's really good mm -hmm. that we came together. It shows that we can't agree to agree, and this is very important issues that we need in 
badly needed in, in all areas. Uh, was it a surprise of any kind, uh, uh, Representative McBride, that uh, reconciliation and uh, the legislature are two words that you don't usually use in the same sense? Well, sense. that's a good word to hear, isn't it? it uh, is, reconciliation, it and I think our leaders on both sides did a good job of coming together to develop this uh, Reconciliation Act. And uh, we know in these unprecedented times that we're in that there's going to be some, some very difficult and challenging times. And, and they're, they're going to be painful experiences, but uh, the Reconciliation Act is a way to soften uh, those deep cuts that we've been looking at. So hopefully uh, we kind of put a little cushion underneath that and uh, to try to help meet the essential services here in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an overview of, of what, uh, what is included in it? Or? Uh, as Senator King mentioned, of course, we have funds for education, uh, Department of Public Safety to make sure that we keep our highway patrolmen out there. Uh, there's some additional money in there for the Department of, of Health uh, to try to make sure that, that we keep uh, public safety first and foremost, uh, I think, as we look at, at this uh, Reconciliation Act. And, of course, we're trying to recover on education dollars uh, in the Act well, as well, too. So I think that's some of the main features. Okay. Senator King, we expect more budget cuts. Can we expect more, or can we expect more reconciliation efforts as well? I think you'll see see more reconciliation efforts. I, I'm certainly hoping. I'm um, an eternal eternal optimist. I believe you'll see it. Uh, with with February's uh, budget, it did not look good. So we'll just have to keep on keeping on. The governor will have to make some more cuts. It's looking like that. I'm. I'm Hopefully I'm wrong, but that's the way it's looking. Okay, well that's a hopeful note. To transportation now, uh, Senator King, what do you uh, what do you hope to accomplish with the bond bills that uh, both of you have written? I think a uh, $300 million bill to the Senate passed, I think you're looking at a public safety issue. We're looking at bridges. We're looking at bridges that need replacing, that's in, uh, that need repairing. We've got uh, some we just have sh are being shored up just to keep them open, but they're still safe. But we've got a lot of work to be, to be done there. We've got roads that need to be paved and built. And uh, certainly there's been a lack of maintenance through the, through the years because of lack of funding. Mm -hmm. And uh, Representative McBride, what do you hope to accomplish? Uh, yes, sir, the uh, same theme. Uh, we're looking at ways, first of all, to uh, keep our transportation system safe. And we want to make sure that uh, when the general public leaves home in the morning that they have good, safe roads to, to travel on during the day and to travel back home safely on. And I think bridges is certainly a priority of this bond bill. And uh, we know we have close to 100 bridges that need some immediate uh, renovation or replacement. So uh, that, I think that will be a priority uh, as we move forward in the conference process mm -hmm. to, to try to meet those needs, as well as uh, we have a lot of bridges out in the counties, uh, local problems that we want to try to alleviate with this money as well. So you agree with the reports that on the uh, poor conditions of the roads and bridges in Mississippi, by and large? By and large, I do. Uh, you know, we have a, a lot of structures, uh, both on the state highway system and, and local system as well, and uh, a lot of highways. I, I think if you travel across the southeastern region particularly, I, I think you feel good about our roads compared to a lot of other states, uh, but we still know that we have a lot of, of needs to meet here in Mississippi to, to keep it safe, uh, to promote economic development. We know that transportation is the number two item that's looked at when an industry wants to locate in Mississippi. And then at, at a time when we're in double-digit double unemployment, I think we have to think about the job creation aspect of it as well. And it's very important right now, more, maybe more so than ever, that we maintain and try to increase jobs in transportation so industry. So safety and finance. We have a telephone call from David, and he's in Jackson. What's your question for our panel? Yeah, your early, your first panel, some of the, uh, the members mentioned the idea of large trucks coming to Walmart and the other building businesses, rather, having a major impact on tearing the roads up. What about the idea, I know this is anathema to the Republican governor, what about the idea of some type of a development tax to have those trucks and other large uh, things that tear up the roads to help pay for upkeep of Mississippi roads? Okay, uh, Senator King, you wanna take that? A development tax, a possibility? I don't see that development tax coming, uh, you know, that's, that's not economic development tax is, is, not, is not good as we see, especially in today's economic environment. Um, however, I think you'll see uh, either put the tax on the, the, the distributor or where, or where it's going. Of course, trucks pay taxes already, so uh, sometimes, you know, they can only carry so much or 80,000 pounds on the federal highway where it's 82.5 on your state highway. So uh, I guess that's an argument that we can, can carry on for a long time, but I did not see a, a tax coming like that. Okay, what about you, Representative McBride? Do you think it's a good idea? 
Uh, I think that the times that we're in now, we have to ex explore certainly every opportunity that's out there, but the trucking industry right now is, is like every other industry in, in the United States. They're having a problem, and uh, for them to be uh, to taxed additionally is certainly not going to help their business climate. And uh, as Senator King said, the trucking industry is already paying uh, quite a few taxes, probably paying their fair share right now on fuel taxes and uh, there's, there are other business taxes that they're paying like uh, all other businesses do. So. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, Mississippi's getting the kind of support that it needs from Washington for our transportation issues here, Representative McBride? I, I think Washington is, is struggling just like we are, uh, trying to determine the best way to meet the future transportation needs all across this country. And it, it's evident that, that uh, that there is more travel uh, going on and, and we're collecting uh, less fuel tax. I mean, there's more, more vehicles out there. They're traveling less uh, due to the increased fuel prices. So uh, we're bringing in less revenue for transportation. So we need to look at the transportation structure. And, and I think that, that Congress is really struggling with that, just like we are here in the states. Okay, and uh, Senator King, what do you think? Is Washington helping as much as uh, they could or should? Uh, I think they could be helping more. I think they're, they're not, uh, in touch with the people, the infrastructure, your highways, your roads, your bridges, your water, your sewage, that's job creation. It's the fastest way to get people working. And if they're gonna send money, and they, uh, they, would, they would start there first because that's sheer job creation. And that's what we need, not only in Mississippi, but all over the country. Okay, and we're going to the phone lines now, and uh, we uh, invite you to call in one 877 405 Five two four seven. This is a call from Harrison. Go right ahead with your call. Yeah, hi. This is Harrison uh, Bowman. I'm I'm curious. There's a lot of development on the bridges on I-59 South between Hattiesburg and the Louisiana state line, and I see they're widening the sides of the bridges uh, to include the uh, uh, side roads and so forth or the uh, 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 shoulder, so to speak. And I'm curious as to what the benefit is that to the public and uh, how much that's costing per bridge. Mm -hmm. Senator King, what you know, the widening shoulders? Uh, it's a safety issue, and we, we need, they need to be widened. If you look at all the bridges that were built in the 40s and the 50s, uh, they do not have those. So mm -hmm. it's a sheer public safety issue, and I believe it's uh, to receive those federal monies just what you have to do right now okay. also. So the cost is? The, co the, the cost is, I cannot give you a cost that's according to the size of the bridge. I, I, do, I do not know. Okay. And uh, Representative McBride, how do you feel about uh, the, uh, the well, shoulders being wide? Yeah, certainly a safety issue, and, and we think about bridges and trying to make sure that they don't collapse, but it's other safety features on the highways as well. We know wider roads uh, provide more safety features. Uh, we know that uh, the overlays that have been going on uh, from the stimulus funds that we received uh, takes out the rutting and makes it a smoother for you to drive on, especially during times of bad weather. And uh, you'll see that there's also been a lot of work done on, on interchanges to try to widen them out and make it safer as you get on and off uh, different highways. So uh, safety is, is definitely uh, a big factor in what we're doing these days. And the rumble strips uh, down the side of the highways is another good example of trying to keep our motorists safe. Okay, Senator King, let's talk about some uh, uh, economic issues as well. Uh, Blue Springs, for example, uh, are we going to be spending more money and is that money well spent in uh, the road projects at Blue Springs? I think it'd be well spent. Of course, uh, Toyota's got to make that commitment. Uh, I think the commitment's been made by the building and the land that they have on, that they own. Uh, on my meeting with Senator Kirby and the governor, uh, we had a meeting and, I, and the governor said he needed so much money, he needed $160 million for, the, uh, for that road. Uh, we have 90 million in our bill, for the, mostly for the south section. We don't say you've got to build the south section, but we say it's our preference because it should be the priority, not the northern section. That would cost around 89 and a half million, but we put 90 million in there for that. And the governor's response to me when I asked him, I said, Governor, I don't want to be responsible for just building a road to an empty building. And he said, I assure you that they'll be building cars there before the road is built. Okay, uh, you're certain of that? I'm just telling you what, I, I respect the governor what he said and I believe him. Okay, uh, what kind of guarantees do we have, if any? We don't have any guarantees. We do have a guarantee that, that uh, from them, to, uh, from, uh, talking in his negotiations with Toyota. 
Mm -hmm. Representative McBride, any of that concern you? It concerns me a little bit, uh, but as you know, as we understand it, that Toyota is still committed uh, to come to Northeast Mississippi. I think one way that they've showed a commitment is that they committed to the school districts in Pontotoc Union and Lee Counties that they would make a five million dollar payment each year for ten years and I understand that they have made that initial payment. They also have 80 employees on the site now uh, they're at the building that they've maintained so uh, I, I think that looks good and uh, they have a 9.5 million dollar interest payment uh, that will be due in April so I think that we'll, that'll be a good factor as well when that interest payment comes due and we see how those payments are made. We have five different suppliers to Toyota that have announced uh, that they, their intentions of, of operating facilities in that immediate area. So I, think, I do think it's important that we provide the critical infrastructure uh, for those that have already announced and for others that may be enticed to come into that area. And we don't want just a distribution center to be there around the Toyota site. We want a manufacturing uh, facility, the other industries that come. We want them to actually be engaged in manufacturing do you because that will be mean more, jo yeah, more you, jobs to the area. Do you personally think they're going to be building cars before the highway's built? <laughs> I don't know. I, I hope they are, actually. Just I hope. hope they are. Okay, Paul from Tylertown has a question. Go right ahead, Paul. Yeah, what I'd like to know, uh, uh, Highway 27, when are they going to start four-laning it? That's an evacuation route. Highway 27 four-laning, are you familiar with that one, uh, uh, Senator King? I believe. Uh, I can't give you any time or date, but it's taken so much time now just to get a environmental that it's taking longer under this administration than it has before. So I think all your holdups with environmental and right-of-way, and I don't know if there are all the right-of-way has been bought on that. that that's, that's all I know about that project. Mm -hmm. What about uh, highways on the coast? Are they high priority? They are, they they are high priority and certainly for hurricane evacuation as, as we looked at a number of different outlets how to get from from east to west on the coast all along the coast, coastline how you can get north and we look at 59, 49, uh, 67, 57, a number of different 15. roads that come off 15 that come off the coast and uh, try to make sure they're in good condition and uh, Highway 49 with the expansion of the Port of Gulf Port uh, certainly will become more and more of a priority as we look at ways to, to rebuild it, uh, not only the highway but the rail infrastructure uh, going north out of Gulf Port too. So the coast is definitely a priority in transportation. Okay, so those are the priorities that we've, uh, uh, that we've set out. There's also been some concern expressed about uh, some parts of the state, such as the Delta, that are sometimes left behind when we're thinking about expanding or repairing the infrastructure uh, there. Are Mississippians all across the state getting equal access to transportation improvements? I think that uh, to answer your question, probably not. Um, the Vision 21 program only only addresses really the uh, high population areas, and so the, some of the rural areas will probably be left out, being being the case of that. So I feel like uh, there's a lot of work being done. A lot of two-lane roads are being widened and improved, and overlaid, but I, th I think that we'll uh, continue to do that and we recognize that fact, but uh, right now with the, with the Division 21 program, I think this high priority would be like on the coast and where the population is in North Mississippi. Okay, uh, Representative yeah. McBride, uh, what sort of transportation elements would you describe as critical for supporting economic development all across the state? I think our Department of Transportation does a good job at analyzing the needs all over the state and, and they are different. Uh, just like the state is diverse from one end to the other and in certain areas around the state uh, certainly don't feel like they, they get their share and maybe they don't. But you know the Delta certainly has, has different needs and they have transportation needs that need to be met. Then you get into the high population areas, high growth areas, and they have different needs. So that there's needs all over the state and, and as we alluded to earlier we just don't have the uh, finances to take care of every single need. So. We try to adjust them according to priority, and uh, economic development is, is one of those priorities. And uh, many times we don't have the infrastructure in place before an industry comes, but we try to work with them to get it in place by the time that they're ready to stop or start operation. Okay, uh, uh, Senator King, you authored a measure that would have allowed MDOT to make certain expenditures without first getting appropriations uh, bill from the legislature. The uh, measure didn't make it out of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Why do you, uh, why'd you write the bill and why didn't it win more support, do you think? 
appropriation bill that, that I authored. Mm -hmm. What was the name, the name of the bill? Uh, it was just an appropriations bill uh, that didn't make it out of the Senate Appropriations Committee uh, that would uh, make certain uh, expenditures without first getting an appropriations bill from the legislature. I really can't answer, answer that. We had several. Some of those we, we offer as chairman, we offer for the, for the Department of Transportation. Uh, it's, it's monies. We get most of our monies, of course, from the fuel tax for, for uh, transportation. But I feel, I feel like that uh, the money's not there and that was not a priority. Evidently, the chairman felt like it wasn't a priority, and so it, it didn't get, get the uh, proper vote. Okay. By the way, it's uh, Senate Bill 2998. Okay. Uh, are you satisfied with uh, federal stimulus funding uh, of transportation work as it currently stands? Well, I feel like we should have gotten a larger amount. We had 75 shovel ready projects ready to go on the high side of 700 million. We received 355 million. And out of that, a third of that money monies went to the counties and the cities. So that left about 240 million to be divided amongst the three districts in the state. So uh, no to answer your question, because all we could do with that was overlay some roads and repair some bridges. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of money, but when you're building roads and you're overlaying roads, it, it's not. And we've got a lot of work that needs to be done. That's a costly process. So what about uh, Representative McBride? Are you satisfied with uh, the federal stimulus funding that we're getting in Mississippi? Uh, not, certainly we're not satisfied with the amount. And uh, I think we were all hoping that that infrastructure would be a, a more of a play more of a role in in the uh, stimulus funds, but I think I'm satisfied with the use of the funds that we received. I think the Department of Transportation has done a good job in spreading those out and helping meet some different needs that we have, and and and, and talking to some contractors uh, who have been on projects and had stimulus funds. It's actually helped them maintain employees that they had uh, that they would have let go if it hadn't been for those stimulus funds. So. I think it's fulfilled the purpose for the actual amount of funds that we got in Mississippi. Okay, we have a call. We'll go to the phone bank now and talk to, uh, or have Bob ask a question from Forrest. Bob, go right ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for taking the call. Sure. Uh, I haven't heard anyone uh, uh, talk about maybe how to stretch our money a little further and spend it a little wiser, and, and all I've heard is how can we get more money out of the federal government. And I'm a truck driver, and I see situations every day that to me are just ridiculous. Take uh, take the intersection of uh, 55 North and 220. We got three lane roads going east, west, north, south. They're really nice roads. You get up there, we neck down 55 North to two lanes. We dump the traffic off of uh, Caroline Road onto that. And then anybody that wants to take the 220 exit has to cross the traffic coming off of county line. And anybody who wants to go 55 north coming off of county line has to cross that traffic. And it, every afternoon is a, I can't believe it did it. And it, it just don't make any sense. And I, I would wish somebody could, you know, enlighten me as to why in the world they neck that down two lanes. Okay. Sometimes it's backed up all the way down, oh, a mile or so. And another thing, another quickie I'll mention. Okay. Uh, on 20 East, going towards Meridian, they have all these signs everywhere they put a drain tile in that Yazoo Clay, a uh, big uh, metal sign that says drain tile with an arrow pointing down with a nice little black border around it. And no telling what those signs cost when they could have put a, a, a strip stripe of paint on the side of the road. And uh, you know, anybody coming through the state would look and s at that. And uh, they, are, the, are the highway workers in Mississippi so dumb they have to put arrow pointing down to tell them where drain is? Okay, we get your point, Bob. <laughs> All right, we'll, we, will, we will answer that. We will get some reaction from uh, Senator Tom King. Are we wasting some money out there? Well, we, if, if we are, uh, I don't think we are now. If we Maybe so in the past, but I think we're doing everything we can. I think we're getting lean and... and in the transportation uh, department. I feel like uh, some of those signs that we have on the interstates are requirements by the federal government to receive monies. You have to go by their guidelines. So I'm not saying all of them are, but there's some of those signs are there because of, because of the feds. And, and you have to, you've got to do that to get the money, especially if it's an 80-20 or 90-10 project. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Representative McBride, do you think that uh, there could be some cost savings there just in acting smarter? I guess there's always cost savings to be made. I, I could have cost savings in my own household, and, and uh, you always try to look for those savings personally, and we try to look for those savings in state government. Uh, you know, I think the gentleman asked a pretty qu a complex question about engineering de and design of highways. Uh, I think we have good engineering uh, in MDOT, and uh, certainly the feds are involved in things that we do as well as outside people come and evaluate those things. But, uh, you know, transportation is, is really a complex industry, and uh, it's a lot more to it than meets the eye a lot of times. And I'm amazed at what I see driving down the highway and what I learn, you know, when I call and check on some of the things I see. So mm -hmm. it's not always as simple as it appears. Okay, something else that may not be as simple as it appears. Another transportation issue is a Senate measure designed to ban texting by drivers died in the House. What happened to that bill? Well, we, uh, the House has been dealing with this for a couple of years and, and has had extensive hearings on it and brought in uh, people with the cellular industry. We brought in law enforcement, a lot of different interested parties uh, in that issue, and uh, there has been a lot of interest in it. We, we passed it early in the session in the House and got it out on the House calendar, and uh, we didn't feel like that there was enough votes to pass it, so we took a, the Senate version that came over to us and, and put some other language in it and actually passed it in the Transportation Committee, but it was double referred to the uh, Public Utilities Committee where it ran into some problems. And uh, I think those problems related to enforcement. Uh, how would you enforce someone talking on their cell phone versus someone who was texting or sending an email? So it's a it. language so, problem at this point? Uh, I, I think it was a law enforcement problem is how, how you were going to enforce it. And uh, just an, some people were concerned about individual rights, so we shall tell people what they couldn't or couldn't do uh, on their cell phones. But it, it's, uh, I think there's 19 states that have adopted this, and so I, I think we'll continue to look at it, try to make another way to make our roads safer. Distracted drivers uh, contribute to a lot of accidents on our highways. Okay, Senator King, we'll let, or, or we'll let uh, you get it on this as well. Are you a big texter, and what do you think about the texting ban for uh, drivers? I, I voted for the bill. I think yeah. it's a good bill. I think it's a far-reaching bill. Uh, we've had many deaths because of that. We've had uh, train wrecks because of that and people killed. Uh, I think we need to look at it again and, uh, and pass it. And I think it should not just be for teenagers. I think it should be for adults also, all across the board. Mm -hmm. There's no one who can safely text then. Exactly. Okay. Well, uh, you've also proposed new rules for trucks carrying loose material. Do you have any details on that for us? Well, it's a TARP bill and we tried to pass it last year and it did not go. And we had a 26,000 pounds, uh, if it was less, you, you were okay, but over 26,000 pounds, you had to have a tarp. And so uh, we passed it uh, unanimously in the Senate, but it, uh, for some reason it failed in the House. Mm -hmm. And why, why was that? Are you aware of uh, Representative McCray? Uh, the House members have, have, have been concerned about that bill and uh, what, are, what are you going to tarp? Uh, I know this year they had a, had a weight limit, but in the past that's really been a problem about uh, where you're hauling something on a trailer, pulling it behind a truck, or you as a homeowner, or some a private property owner working on your own property and what you're hauling, and maybe one of these days in in the future we'll be able to kind of work the details out on that. But uh, I think a lot of uh, trucking industries that I, that I've noticed as of late have kind of taken that on theirself and are tarp tarping a lot of their trucks presently. So. Okay, we have a phone call now from Seminary. This is John. What's your question for the panel? Go right ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh <laughs> I was what I was calling about. One thing is uh, why is uh, the Mississippi Department of Transportation in Covenant Highway 588 in Covenant County in such a it's in such a mess? Why are they letting it go? And over in Jones County, part of 588, it's in perfect condition. What's the what's the reason why they're letting it go? So okay, can you give us a little more details on that then? Uh, well, yes, John? Sir, it's got potholes in it. You can see part of the black top. You can see part of uh, you know. You can see uh, it's in. It's just in a mess. In some places, knock your car out of the line. Okay. Have you contacted anybody at MDOT for this, and have you received yes. any? What are they saying? They're, they, I've never got an answer for them, from them. Okay. Is there anybody here that can help uh, uh, John from Seminary with this? Uh, I'm not familiar with 588, but I'll sure be glad to talk to someone at the Department of Transportation about it and see uh, yeah. if there's something going on with it, maybe some future plans that we're not aware of to to try to get it in shape and you know we have highways that obviously do need some assistance but uh, normally we don't let them go, go down to that uh, level before we try to start to build it up so we'll check on that for you. 
Okay. I passed the seminary going home and then I will certainly check on it and find out what, what, what's the reason and how come those things have not been repaired, especially your potholes. That, that's, that's dangerous and we, that's another public safety issue. Okay, I'm sure John will appreciate it. We have a call Absolutely. now from uh, Wayne County. Go right ahead. Okay, it's Gaston from Wayne County. Go right ahead, Gaston. Yeah, well, what my complaint is, is, uh, is you know, our little old county over here, is uh, I, I know we low on the totem pole or whatever, but we're uh, just just roughly looking at everything. We down to about three miles of leveling and reseal per year. Uh, you know how we get our state aid money and whatever, and then we got bridges and stuff on top of that, and and I'm like, we we can't keep up. I mean, and then we talking about we taking state aid cuts, we taking LSBP cuts, and uh, I don't know. Someday somebody's got to come back to where the rubber meets the road, and we, we're gonna have to. We, what we're gonna do? Hey, I love the interstate, and I love to drive on them or whatever. But what I'm trying to say, what we're gonna do when the school bus can't get to school? Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, that that's that's my complaint is. And then I got a little five stretch mile down here in Wayne County called the Clara Shakur, Bucatona Shakur Road, uh, that we've been trying to work on. Hadn't had anything done. It's a it's a, a considered a federal route, and it was supposed to have been done in my last term. We've been fighting this thing for six years, and we had we hadn't got it did yet. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on another term of money. In this term of state aid money, saying that I may have to dip in it, they, I can't be it off any roads because I'm going to have to wait and see what this road is going to cost. And we can't get this road built because I'm holding up other roads, you know, or 12 miles per four years. Okay, Gaston. Hey, you know, we get it and let our, let us, uh, let our panelists uh, get some comments in here about that. And I think that. Uh, just basically he's saying that the, the rural areas, the smaller areas, just are, are being overlooked and constantly he doesn't like it. I prefer driving on the state aid roads and the small than, than the interstates. That's the rural Mississippi and that's where real Mississippians are, that's where they live, that's where their homes are. State aid money has been frozen, but we, we feel like that uh, Brooks Miller, who's the director of that, has asked for $40 million. Uh, one and I both have 25, uh, 20 million for state aid roads in our bond bill, and we have 20 more million for the LSBP monies that they so vitally needed in our counties and our rural areas. So we feel like we can get the ball rolling if we get this bond going. And again, about the bond, I feel like as far as borrowing, if you're going to borrow money right now, now's the best time to do it. You can negotiate uh, the interest rates and, and uh, just kind of go from there. Also, you, it's, again, it's good job job creation. So we'll we'll uh, just work on that and continue to work on that because we know it's vitally needed and we're going to do everything we can. We've talked, Warren and I have talked about this before, and we're going to do everything we can for our rural areas because we know it's needed. Okay, what can you say, uh, Representative McBride, to uh, Gaston from Wayne County? Uh, Gaston, the, the local system is very important to us, and uh, that's the lifeblood, really, of our transportation system is uh, coming out of your driveway and that, that's where it has to start. And uh, that is a priority to us. I think we have a very good state aid system. There again, it's just like our state system, there's not enough funds to go around. But uh, we, we continue to be focused on the LSBP program. We do have 20 million uh, in our bond proposal for that. In the House, we started with an additional 20 million for, for bridges and particularly smaller bridges that, that have not had been properly funded for replacement of them. And the, the House committee was so concerned about the rural area of Mississippi that they came and added another 20 million for uh, additional bridges also in the rural area. So okay. we're really focused on, on the local system as well. Okay, uh, we have just a couple of minutes, but I st did want to get in this uh, question. One effort that apparently is gaining traction about, uh, we're talking about uh, all-terrain vehicle uh, safety. One effort that apparently is gaining traction is the John Paul Ferrer Bicycle Safety Act. Now, who is this man and what does this uh, effort accomplish if it's passed? It's a young man, young man that was killed in North Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we named the bill after him. 
and his, his parents came to, we, we had a hearing, his parents were there, and it was very moving, and it, uh, just to hear their testimony, how it happened, and, and it was just, just something that was overwhelmed all of us, and we had a lot of people there with the Mississippi Bicycle Association, and people from the coast, and all over Mississippi, uh, that bicycle or cycle. So we've, uh, f from that, we took a bill that was about 20 or 25 pages and made it to about three or four. So we made it a little leaner, mm -hmm. but they worked with us side by side and in, in, in getting the proper language that we felt like was needed, needed for people riding bicycles that will make it much safer for them as they ride bicycles. Okay, Representative uh, McBride. Yes, sir. I, I think we had four individuals that were killed. Uh, last year on our state's roads, and uh, we've had one that got killed last night on the Gulf Coast at Gulfport mm -hmm. uh, riding a bike. So we want to show, try to show that, that Mississippi is safe for bicyclists, and we have riders, uh, one of the person, people that were killed last year was from the Netherlands, I believe, or Holland. So we have people coming here from all over the world to ride our, our beautiful highways and see the beautiful uh, nature that we have here and, and uh, natural resources such as the natural tr Natchez Trace, Highway 1 through the Delta, uh, several roads along the coast where groups like to come and ride, and it's, it's about as much about tourism uh, as it is anything else. Okay, and quickly, what about concerns about the ATV safety? Uh, there are a lot of concerns about ATV safety, especially with uh, young people 16 and under. There was a lot of interest in that legislation uh, in the House. It just didn't quite gain the, the support that it needed, but we will continue to look at that issue in the okay. future. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all the time we have for tonight, though, so we're going to have to close on that. I'd like to thank our guests, Senator Tom King and Representative Warner McBride, and thank you for joining our discussion tonight. We will soon have this edition of Quorum available for viewing online at mpbonline.org. Quorum returns next Wednesday at 7 o'clock with more coverage of Legislature 2010. I'm Ron Brown. Have a good night.